part of worship with Light of Life Church. Amen. We are so blessed to be in a building, blessed to be in this city, and we pray that you are blessed at home. If you're ready to glorify God, can you just stand up wherever you are this morning and give him the glory that he deserves? We're going to ask for his spirit to move this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise him. Praise him.
to the Lord this morning. He's been good to you this morning. Just worship him this morning. Put your hands to the sky. Open up your mouth and worship him. Worship him this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
nor forsaking us, Lord. If he's never left you nor forsaken you, can you please just give him a shout of praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Burn me holy, burn me beautiful, burn me lovely, burn me righteous, burn me holy, burn me beautiful, burn me lovely, burn me righteous, burn me holy, burn me beautiful, burn me lovely, burn me righteous, burn me holy. One more time.
Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Come on, don't don't stop praising him. Come on, come on, he. Come on, he. He a mighty good God. He's a mighty good God. And when you think of the goodness of Jesus, your soul shouldn't help but cry hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's a mighty God. He's an awesome God. He's a wonderful God. Listen, those of you who are watching, make sure you share this. I know there's some construction going on, but listen, give us a little bit of grace. We promise you we're going to fix everything. So right now, our online audience, we coming back to get you. Don't worry. You've been too good to us, and we love you guys. For those of you who are in this crowded place, this is supposed to be social distance. Come on, give God some praise. There must be a... There must be a woman of God going to preach today because y'all all all excited. Y'all look good, dressed up. Y'all excited about her and everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. I want to shout out, too, to my friend, my brother, Pastor Roe. His Rue, him and his wife, Michelle, came in. Y'all give a big shout of praise for them. I was telling him, he said, can I go anywhere? I said, go anywhere you want. He'd been all in the bathroom, up on the stalls, taking pictures and stuff. I said, look at God, look at God. So I thank you, my friend, my brother. You got two churches in two different states. Isn't that or something? I said, God is using you. God is using him. We were at the gathering this week, and he said, listen, I don't have to be back to Wednesday. Can I come to Manassas? I said, God is in Manassas. You want to come to Manassas? I see some young warriors, Josh, Deshaun out there, and DJ, God bless you. I always like it when young men come come to church. I don't say back to church, but come to church. Because we talked about this last time I was here. You can train up a child the way he should go, but sooner or later he's coming home. So I told Josh yesterday, I said, I got a, a whole new ministry that the Lord told me you're going to take over. So I guess he came to church to see what the Lord said. Amen. So it's so great to see mothers and, and all of your smiling faces. All of the volunteers, give yourself a hand. Clap of praise for being a volunteer. 20, 30 volunteers. So those of you who are watching me right now, there's a way that you can sign up to be part of our hugs ministry, a volunteer ministry. They may have changed the name and everything, but it's still the same. They get to serve. So they have it in their spirit that they get to serve, and so I'm just grateful for them. And do me a favor, let's just go ahead and celebrate the praise team while they're here. Being under construction, man, you got to have a mic with a cord on it. I'm doing my best not to trip over this cord and fall out there in this pit, but that's all right. Jesus will make a way. Give it up for Eric and, and Gabe, our, our drums and our keyboard people. Listen, next week, tell everybody you know, because we back. We back. We back. We working out kinks. We got the best sound guy in the whole country as far as I'm concerned, Brother Aaron. He's working out kinks. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to, I said, I'm going to just put a big picture of you on the screen like this. So we may have a picture of him on the screen and his sound company. We want to celebrate him. So next week we'll be back here live. I want all of you who are here now to bring at least three people. Come on. Can you commit to three? We're going to do like an offering. If you can commit to three people, just start thinking and praying about who they are right now. Commit to three people. Thank you, worship team. Thank y'all. Y'all can go say I want to bring to the stage right now one of my daughters in the ministry. First Lady and I have decided that we want to stop being the only face that you always see. See, there's something when you walk in a church and you see more pictures of the pastor than Jesus, you got to rethink that. See, I don't want you to make me Jesus. I certainly don't want you to make us Jesus. So we want to know that there's other voices in this church that are just as powerful that can bring a word. Of course, yes, you show respect to the pastor, first lady, the executive pastor, but there's something that's in this woman's bones that she just got to get it out. 
There's some of you out here who's sitting, somebody who's watching right now. God has chosen to use you in a mighty way. Don't run from that calling. Trust me, if you run, you're going to run out of gas, and you're just going to stop dead where you are. So without further ado, I want to bring to the to preach the word of God today, Deacon Jacinta. She's, she, yeah, yeah. She's, <laughs> she's awesome. She's wonderful. She's used by God. She's a woman of God. Her mother's here. Her son's here. She's an amazing woman of God. So listen, don't just sit down and clap and just give her back some feedback and let her know. Those of you who are watching, share with your hearts and your likes. Without further ado, Deacon Jacinta, you got it, girl. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to be here. Um, I first and foremost want to welcome all of you from LOLC Nation. LOL. All right, I'm in the right place. Good morning. Thank you, guys. Honor. Honor is due to Pastor and First Lady. Thank y'all so much for even allowing me to speak to your people. I'm excited. I'm so excited to share the word that uh, God has given me. And I also want to give thanks to my mom and to my son, Derek. They uh, left the house and had a blast yesterday while I was in the house praying and studying. Amen. So thank y'all for doing that. Lastly, I want to give honor. Of course, certainly not least, I need to give honor to God for what he is doing in me and in this place. Oh, God, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Have your way today in this place. Thank you, Lord, just for saving me. Come on, y'all. Can y'all clap for salvation? I'm just thankful to be saved, y'all. Amen. Amen. All right, I'm going to go ahead and go into prayer really quick. Father God, have your way. Move me behind the cross, Lord God, so that I'm not seen, but your word goes forth. And that the hearts of the, pe of the people are prepared to be permeated by your word. Have your way. Wreck this place, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, turn this place upside down so that when we walk out of this room, that we are not the same as we walked in. It's in Jesus' name that I pray and I say amen. Amen. You all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. So, y'all, this is our anniversary month, and I just want to celebrate the fact that we are blessed in the city still. Amen. Amen. We are blessed. And I, and I just want to shout out Pastor and First Lady for even allowing me to do that. When Pastor came to me and said, you're going to preach during anniversary month, I think my eyes got this big. Because <laughs> I think that's such a, a, a big job. But I appreciate um, him allowing me to do that and First Lady allowing that. But I want to go ahead and start the sermon off with a quote that I heard from a movie that I love. It's titled The Pilgrim's Progress. It's actually based off a book, which is an allegory written in the 1600s by a man named John Bunyan. And it is a book or a movie, you can watch it, that talks about the life of a Christian's journey. It talks about from the very beginning of when you get salvation to the end where you make it to what is called the celestial city or what we would know it as is heaven. And one of the quotes from there that caught me was, the deceiver made the difficulty of your journey something you wanted to avoid. I'm going to read that one more time. And it says, the deceiver made the difficulty of your journey something that you wanted to avoid. How many of us are walking around like, yes, today's the day. Make it hard. Nobody. <laughs> Not a soul. <laughs> but what I want to do, though, is share a story with you about the Apostle Paul. And we're going to be coming out of the book of Acts. That's going to be chapter 16. So make sure you write that down because you're going to need to go and read that for yourself. We're going to go through it. I'm going to do my best to do it quickly. But we're going through the uh, book of Acts chapter 16. But let's talk about Paul for a second. I want you to know something about Paul. I need you to, I need you to get this. Paul is the apostle. He's one of the apostles, but he never walked with Jesus. I need y'all to understand that about Paul. He did not walk with Jesus. He's not one of the original 12. But 
Paul is that same apostle Paul that wrote most of the New Testament. Okay? And I want to share with you about Paul. Paul is also that same, same Paul that held the coat, had his little arm out, of all of those who stoned the martyr Stephen. That is the first martyr of the church. Paul is the same Paul that was journeying on the Damascus Road and had a chance encounter. I don't know if y'all watched it back in March, but that was the name of my last sermon. A chance encounter with Jesus on the Damascus Road. Okay, so he's on there ready to kill Christians because what does he do? He's a zealous Pharisee. He is ready to do the work of the Pharisees. Paul was zealous. So he goes on the Damascus Road and he has an encounter with Jesus. And Paul and Jesus blinds who he was at the time, Saul. Of course, Jesus changes his name to Paul. But we'll get there in another time. If you read the book of Acts, you'll see that. <laughs> but, but he gets blinded. But I just want to let you know that that St. Paul that did all those things, those wicked things to Christians, God uses him in a mighty way. He writes most of the New Testament, as I stated before. So I want you to know, before we even go on, that your past does not determine your present, nor does it determine your future. I don't know who needed to hear that, but just the Spirit just laid it on my heart that it doesn't matter what you were. It don't matter how bad you were. God could use you in a mighty way. Amen. So we're going into Acts 16, verses 1 through 5. I'm going to read it quickly. It's not going to come on your screens. But I need you to get some context. So it says, Paul came to Derbe and then to Lystra, where a disciple named Timothy lived, whose mother was Jewish and a believer, but whose father was a Greek. The believers at Lystra and Iconium spoke well of him, but Paul wanted to take him along on the journey. So he circumcised him because of the Jews who lived in that area. For they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they traveled from town to town, they delivered the decisions reached by the apostles and elders in Jerusalem for the people to obey. Check out your screen. It says, so the churches were strengthened in faith and grew daily in numbers. I need you to hold on to that scripture. So the churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. Now, I read all of that to you because I want to give you a little bit of behind the scenes context. There was something called the Jerusalem Council that Paul had just came back from in Acts chapter 15. Again, read the book of Acts. You're going to get so much from it because everything placates on the other thing. But they went to Jerusalem because there was an argument in chapter 15 where some people were coming in and they were saying to the believers, the new believers, that in order to be saved, you needed to be circumcised. That's part of why I read about Timothy getting circumcised. They said that you needed to be circumcised. And Paul and Barnabas said, absolutely not. That's not accurate. So they all went to Jerusalem. There was this big debate with the apostles and the elders of the church. The apostles that he's talking about are the ones that actually walked with Jesus. So when they went back to Jerusalem, they talked to them. They talked about all the great things that God had been doing in uh, where they were preaching, where Paul and Barnabas had stepped and preached and how people were getting saved. And it came about that Peter was there, of course, you know, Peter the rock, you know, the denied three times, but then Jesus restored him. I want to say something about that. You can be restored. There's restoration in Christ Jesus. But back to the story. So Peter was there and he also says, you know what? They're right. You don't have to be circumcised because God did a thing with Cornelius. Again, if you read the book of Acts, you will catch this. <laughs> so, so, the, so they went back there, the decision was made, there were some things that the elders said, and the elders basically said, listen, circumcision does not equivocate to salvation. You do not need to have a circumcision to be saved, it's your heart posture. Salvation is in the heart posture, amen? So focus on the fact that, let's remember, put it in our pocket so the churches were strengthened in the faith and grew daily in numbers. All right. So we're moving on to verse 6, and I'm going to go quickly again. It says, Paul and his companions traveled throughout the region of Phrygia and Galatia, having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. I need y'all to hear that. Having been kept by the Holy Spirit from preaching the word in the province of Asia. When they came to the border of Mycenae, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mycenae and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia stopping and begging him, 
come over to Macedonia and help us. Okay. I want to pause really quickly before we go to the next um, scripture. I just want to say that Paul had a relationship with the Holy Spirit. How do we know that? Because when he tried to go into a city, when he tried to enter a pl into a place, and the Spirit stopped him, he kept it moving. It's imperative that we understand that when the Spirit tells us no, no matter what we want to do, no matter how much we want to help, no matter how much we want to do a thing, keep it moving. There's a reason for the keeping it moving. All right. So it says, after Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once. Okay, stop. We got ready at once. Pack it up, let's go. God told us what to do. Pack it up, let's go. God told us what to do. God said, Paul said, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. All right? So now we're going to go to the next part. And I'm going to summarize really quick. This is verses 11 through 13. And basically, long story short, Paul from Troas got into sea, went to, ended up in Philippi, which is a big city in Macedonia, which is where he was supposed to go because of the dream. So Paul goes to Macedonia as instructed by the Holy Spirit. So now we see that he's there. He decides to do what he's supposed to do. Paul starts looking for a place of prayer, a.k.a. the church. How do we know it's the church? It doesn't have to necessarily be a building. It could be the people. But, but Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Okay? So this is the house of prayer. So one of the listening women from the city of Thyatira named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth, she was a worshiper of God. Let's focus on Lydia for one second. She was a worshiper of God, so she was where she was supposed to be. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. Pause. So she was where she's supposed to be. How many believers are, are where they're supposed to be? Do you know that if you're in the right place, that God can send the right person to give you what you need for the strength of your journey? Okay. So be in the right place. Your placement is imperative to what God is trying to give you sometimes. Sometimes you just got to be where you're told to go in the first place. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. All right. So I want to point this out to you because I want to do a quick recap of Paul, right? So he goes to the Jerusalem council, goes, comes back. People are encouraged in the faith, and it increases in number. Paul listens to God. He, he hears clean, keenly from the God. God is so close and intense with Paul that he gave him a dream and showed him exactly where he needed him to be. So he's, a, a, a quickly, he's quickly and he's radically obedient. Let's talk about radical obedience. Let's go there. You need to be radically obedient. Jesus said, go, let's move. Again, pack it up. Let's go. Amen. So now Paul goes to where he's told to go. He runs into Lydia. Lydia is transformed. Her, not just Lydia, her family is transformed. They're all baptized in the name of Jesus. Okay. So now we have progress. So where, what we see now is that where every, wherever Paul goes, fruit happens. As believers, wherever we go, we should be able to bear fruit. That is a part of our her heritage. We are multipliers. Why are we multipliers? Because of Christ on the inside of us. Nothing that we do that allows us for multiplication, but it's all the Christ that's on the inside of us that allows us to multiply. Amen. So let's get to the fun part of the story, the part that I need you to really capture. So the next set of verses says, once we were going to the place of prayer, here it goes again, they're going where they're supposed to go. <laughs> we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she particularly predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. Okay. I'm going to pause there really quick. <laughs> they were going to where they were supposed to go, the house of prayer. The devil went and found them. They were headed to go worship the Lord. The devil sought them out. Don't be surprised when you get sought out. 
as you're going to where you need to go. Don't be surprised. Don't get shocked. That's what's supposed to happen. He's going to look for you. But I want to pause and also quote my pastor, Pastor Tony. What does he say? When God confirms the enemy, the enemy what? He confronts. That's right. When God confirms you, the enemy confronts you. God confirmed to Paul, you need to be in Macedonia. Paul went to Macedonia, and guess who came looking for him? That darn devil. Amen. Let's keep going. So it says, she followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are the servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. Let's, let's kind of unpack that really quick. I'm going to do it fast, but I need you to catch me. Because somebody is saying, but she was telling the truth. She absolutely was, but she was telling it in the wrong spirit. <laughs> Discernment. Discernment is paramount. It is paramount in your walk as a believer. If you are a believer in Christ Jesus, you need to ask God for the spirit of discernment. Because I can tell you the truth. Because we know the word is the truth, but it could be from the wrong spirit and it will deviate you to the wrong location. God don't want you to go in the wrong way. And then he, he did what he was supposed to do. I want to point this out too. Paul let this happen for long enough. I'm going to tell you right now, the Holy Spirit and the devil ain't going to reside comfortably in the same place. The Holy Spirit going to get vexed. So some of us are going through some things, and we start to get irritated. That's a holy irritation. You need to start rebuking some things because you're not supposed to have that near you because the devil and the Holy Spirit are not going to coincide cohesively. They're not going to reside comfortably. You're not going to feel good. It's going to feel like sandpaper. It's going to feel like that rock in your shoe because you're not supposed to be comfortable around the things that aren't of God. Amen? Amen. So we're going to run fast. We're going to run fast. I need y'all to hold on. Buckle up your seatbelts. I'm going to read real quick. So it says in verses 19 through 24, when her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into, mar into the marketplace to face the authorities. They brought them before the magistrates and said, these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar. How many Christians are throwing your city in the, into an uproar? If you're not, get busy. I'm talking about get busy doing the things of God, not just being foolish. Get busy and throw your city into an uproar. By advocating customs unlawful for us Romans to accept our pra or practice. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Sidonis. Don't be surprised when other people jump on the bandwagon and come against you. It's supposed to happen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. So the crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the driller was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet with socks. Okay. So, we all got the recap. We know we're clear. I hope I made it clear. Paul is doing everything that God told him to do. At no, at no point did Paul deviate from the plan. Paul listened to the Lord. And in listening to the Lord, he is now in prison. Not just in prison, he's in the inner cell. Not just in the inner cell, he's fastened with his feet with stocks, Paul and Silas. And they have been beaten with rods. Somebody's concerned about that. But we're going to keep going. I, I just need you to see some things. I need you to see that sometimes when we are doing the will of God, hardship comes our way. And it's nothing that we did wrong. But God is not always worried about our comfort. He's worried about his glory. Amen. Let's go to verse 25. And it says, 
about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to him. Okay, we're going to pause here again. At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. Ooh, your praise and your prayer are essential. They're not optional. They're not kind of. It's not maybe. It is a necessity. And you're going to see why in a minute. But I want you to also see that not only did they praise and pray, we don't know what happened in the middle, right? Because we all go through different things. We know, we don't know what happened from between the time they got the flogging and up until midnight. We don't know what their response was. But we do know that whatever their response initially was, they chose not to stay there and they chose God. Some of us go through things and you're human. You might have a visceral response. You might have a reaction. But you can't stay in your reaction. Your initial reaction is not what God calls you to stay in. God calls you to shift your narrative and make a decision to praise him, to pray to him in your hardships, in your trials. That's part of what we need to do. But I want to point out that the prisoners were listening to them. Okay, two questions for you. How do you respond to hardship? It's okay if you get caught up for a second. Don't stay there. Don't stay there. And then the second question I have is how many of you know that people are watching your response to the hardship? If you are the only believer in your family and every time something goes wrong, it's, oh, God, I ain't going to make it. How are they supposed to look at you and see the Christ in you? How are they supposed to feel empowered by the Jesus that lives on the inside of you? Some of us are new believers, so this is new to us. I get it. But some of y'all been walking with the Lord way too long to be doing the same thing every time something goes wrong. Some of us got to mature. Some of us got to grow. Some of us got to make the decision because did I choose Jesus? If I said yes, then that means I accept to go the way, all the way, the way that he tells me to go, the way that he tells me to do it, I'm going to go with boldness. And I'm not going to be afraid of the terror by night or the arrow that flies by me. I'm going to keep going and I'm going to praise them anyhow. Amen? Amen. So let's keep going. It's about to get even more messy. <laughs> So in verse 26 through 28, it says, suddenly, Deacon Kim asked me one time when I was praying, she said, just, Deacon Jacinta, how do you know to say the God of suddenly? This is verse right here. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and every bunch chains came loose. I don't know who want to run in the building right there. I don't know, but by their prayer and their praise to God in spite of the hardship, the praise was so detrimental. This is why our praise team is so important. This is why the intercessors are so important because you need to pray and you need to praise to shake the foundations loose on somebody's life. You may not see a physical manifestation of the shaking, but you don't know whose binds you are breaking off. By your prayer and your praise. This is why you never quit praying for that unsaved child. This is why you never quit praying for your friends, for your family. This is why you never quit because you don't know when the bonds will break. Amen. Whew, okay. 27. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. All right. So I need you to, 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 to keep, keep flowing with me. It says next, it says, The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, <laughs> Sirs, what must I do to be saved? Some of y'all still mad at somebody who did something to you in 1932. <laughs> somebody is still mad. 
Y'all don't even know that. I, I, I need y'all to see this. This person said to them, what must I do to be saved? Is the same person that fastened them to the inner cell and put socks on their feet. You can't even forgive the person who stole your husband. Yeah, I said it. <laughs> you can't forgive somebody who did something to you in middle school. We in our 30s. Get free. Because your freedom might be what needs to happen for their freedom. You so busy worried about how it made you feel, about what they said about you, about what they did to you, that you're missing the point. God ain't worried about your comfort. God is worried about his glory. And if we're worried about God's glory, that means that forgiveness is paramount. It is essential. It is built to free you, but not only to free you, but it will free the other people. And that's why when you're going through a hardship, it's important how you look to people. I'm not saying worry about the people. I'm saying make the choice and the cognitive decision to praise God in the circumstance. Because when you praise God in the circumstance, somebody's going to see you who's not saved. And they're going to see you overcome. And they're going to see you make it through. And when they see you make it through, they're going to look at you and say, what? What do I need to do to be saved? Amen. Amen. Oh, Jesus. So then, of course, Paul and Silas, they tell him the way of salvation. They tell him the way of salvation. And this jailer, the same jailer who threw them in the stocks and in the inner cell, decides to say, you know what? Let me clean your wounds up. They tended to the wounds of Paul and Silas. And then he invited them to his house to be around his family. And then Paul and Silas baptized the whole family. The whole family. Amen. So I need y'all to capture that. Paul did everything that God told him to do, and he suffered immensely for doing God's will. That's part of our heritage. Somebody said, wait a minute, that ain't my heritage. <laughs> but yes, it is, because Jesus promised, if you are a Christian, he promised that you are going to go through trials. That, and he said it. He said it. Amen. But let's go on. So basically, I'm going to summarize the last portion. The magistrates come the next day and say, you know what? Let them go. And Paul was like, wait a minute, I'm a Roman citizen. You came out here, you was acting a fool. <laughs> I'm a Roman citizen. Y'all didn't have to do all that. But they release him, and he goes back to Lydia's house. Y'all remember Lydia, right? He goes back to Lydia's house. And when he goes back to Lydia's house, guess what they choose to do? They encouraged the believers. They didn't go over there, woe was me, this was so hard, this was a tough trial. They went back over there and encouraged Lydia and her family. And then they went on and they left that area. I just want y'all to know that sometimes God will send you directly into a storm for a purpose. And it's his purpose. Not our purpose, not our comfort, not what we like, but God sends us there for a purpose. And I want to tell you, because I think I forgot to share with you what my sermon title was, but the title of the sermon is called Blessed in His Suffering. You know, when God led me to this topic, I, I was concerned, but it was clear that uh, many of us don't understand that Following Christ means to follow him by carrying his cross. And we love the cross, but the cross ain't pretty. The cross is ugly, the cross is brutal, and it's bloody. And sometimes hardships are physical, as we saw, but sometimes it's emotional and spiritual and, 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 and all these different things. But I want you all to know that we need to keep going forward in Christ even when we are going through. And I believe that 
somehow we have convinced ourselves that salvation equals complacency. And I want to dispel that myth right now. The definition of complacent is it's marked by self-satisfaction, especially when accompanied by unawareness of actual dangers or deficiencies. When we say yes to the call of God and we trust in God and we say we're going to do this thing, I don't want you to be confused or lost at the sight of the fact that, or get complacent rather, that things are going to come up. It's supposed to. And it's dangerous for us to not know what those requirements are to follow him. So Jesus says in Matthew 16, 24 through 26, and I'm going to be very, very quick. It says, if anyone wants to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will a person be profited if he gains the whole world but forfeits his life? Or what will a person give in exchange for his life? Deny yourself. Sometimes your feelings and emotions will tell you one thing that you need to be doing, but you need to deny your feelings and emotion. If it's against the word of God, it doesn't matter what you feel. We need to put our feelings into alignment with the word of God. And Jesus says <laughs> in John 16, 33, I have told you, told you these things so that you may have peace. Because in this world, you will have trouble. You will have trouble. But take heart because I've overcome the world. There's no trouble that you're going to get into that God didn't know about. He overcame it already. And I know some people are like, okay, so listen, you're telling me there's going to be trouble. I am saved. Okay, I didn't went and did the salvation thing, and I tithe, and I do all these things, but you're telling me it's going to be hardship anyway? Yes. Yes, I am. And uh, the reason why is because God is worried about the salvation of those who are lost. You have to get to a place where you understand that their salvation matters more than your comfort, and you have to be okay with that. Amen? Because somebody had to do it for you in some way. Amen, amen. So I share with you all of Acts and everything that Paul went through to remind you and to encourage you that no matter what you are going through with God, you will come out on the other side. And this is why our obedience to God and the prompting of the Holy Spirit is important. You need to listen to the Holy Spirit. He knows what he's doing. He's not unsure about it. So just trust in God and forgive those who have hurt you. Pray for those who spitefully use you. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Come on, somebody. Let's get, let's get excited for Jesus real Amen. quick. Come on. Amen. Come on. I need you to do better. You done had a good dinner right now. You're Amen. Your plate is wide open. That was a lot of meat, a lot of food, a lot of vegetables, a lot of potatoes. Oh, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Listen, I asked Deacon just sit to the stay right here because we, we are going to pray over her, and I want you to get ready to posture yourself for that. But I want to bring this to the attention of those of you who are watching, those of you who are here right now. When I ordained her as a deacon over a little bit over a year ago, I told the class, I said, some of y'all are not going to be deacons long. Now, that's not to, hold on, that's not to diminish the diaconate. Amen. But when God shows you somebody who has a word in their bones, you better listen. Come on. So I'm sitting there, and Pastor Ro and I, we look, Ru, we looking at each other, and I'm saying, Ru, you can't teach that. No, not at all. Not That's at all. natural. My God. I've never really sat down with her and said, okay, this is how you get to three-point sermons. This is how you close. <laughs> this is where you talk. This is where you shout. This is where you bring the house. I never did that with her. It came natural. It comes natural yes. to her. Thank you, Jesus. 
So my grandma used to always say, give people their flowers when you give them while they're alive. Amen. But, and I'm going to let First Lady talk, and I'm going to ask Pastor to preach and say something. But I want to tell you something. Somebody watching right now at home, you got that too. Somebody right here, because there's about three people in this room, I know you got it. Yes. And any good shepherd will not let his flock just sit there when God has said, there's a word in your belly. Amen. There's about four people in this room right now. Listen, so I'm giving you notice right now. We know Elder Libby. Elder, come on, why you not up here, Elder Libby? Get up here, Elder Libby. <laughs> the elder of the church will always be up here. Come on, run, Forrest, run. <laughs> the elders should have been up here when we came. I'm sorry. I, didn't, I forgot I got so caught up and you almost made me run in my own church. I'm sorry. <laughs> almost made me. Me and, me and Rue about to take off one time. We had to hold each other back. There's four of y'all in here right now. Let me, let me screen because I know I had four. There's four of y'all in here right now. You better start getting ready. And one online. And one online. One online. Amen. Because in October, I whispered over and told First Lady, I ain't doing nothing in October. I'm letting all y'all preach. I'm going to Bahamas. Woo! <laughs> Me and Ruth, we go, I'm going to your church. I'm going to see you. All right. I'm going to come out there with you. But when God does that, don't run from him. I told you, her and I should be the only faces you guys see. This is your church. You're online. This is your church. That's why online audience now, we learn that it's so critical because this is the place that you called home and God will save you if you just let him into your heart. Yes. So with that being said, there's somebody maybe in here, every head bowed, every eye closed. There's someone who needs Jesus as their Lord and Savior. I don't want to ever presuppose that everyone's saved. You just, you've been coming here 30 years. Maybe you never said that prayer. The Bible says when you confess out of your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus has saved you, then you are saved. So if you have never said, Jesus, come into my heart, be my Lord and Savior, fill me with the Holy Spirit, I want you to just wave your hands. If you're not in here, just text us at 571-926-3185. Come on, it's on your screens. Those of you watching right now, wherever you are, you could be in Idaho, Mississippi, Detroit, the DMV. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ, our intercessors are ready to pray with you. Heck, Deacon, Deacon Jacinta will call you today. After preaching that message, she's going to probably call you and come Amen. to your house. 571-926-3185. Maybe you want to rededicate your life to, church, to this church, to the kingdom. Just throw your hands up if I'm talking to you. Maybe you're online. We'll call you. But maybe you want to be a part of this local church. Man, we are the masses in Manassas. We about to take this city. We about to, I love it when she said the uproar. Reminding me of my friend, Pastor James Teeds. He named it, he named this, named this church the uproar. Pastor James Teeds in Maryland. The uproar church. I said, I'm going to stay alive. But maybe you want to be what we're doing in Manassas. Just let us know, Texas. Amen? Amen. Now, come on, let's celebrate this woman of God one more time. If y'all don't mind, bear with me just a little bit. I want to, I don't want to critique her because I already know there is no critiquing. There is so much that was in there that I wouldn't have been able to come up here and change nothing. If anything, I'd be like, Lord, can you help me next week? That's how great that was. But I want First Lady to say something. Then I want Elder to say something. Then I want our guests just to say a little something about their experience. Pastor Ruben taping y'all and everything. But just real quick, keep, I'm going to do like I had to feel. Keep your, keep your comments to under a minute. <laughs> I just want to say to you, um, Deacon, I, when I read it last night, literally wanted to run around the house. And I called you and I said, man, that's a lot. That's like four weeks of Bible study right there. But you were able to take an entire chapter and bring it down to us where we could understand what you're talking about. And that is a gift that God put inside of you. 
So don't you ever, I know you ain't running from your gift no more. And for those of you who have a gift, you may be running right now. That's okay, right? But eventually, eventually, he's going to get you, all of y'all. So don't you run from your gift. So thank you for your obedience and thank you for hearing and having that discernment to know when and where. Amen. Bless you. That word. <laughs> what well, I don't even know what to say. Amen. That word was amazing. I have to go and sit and listen to that again because that was so amazing. Can God touch me? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I have to go back and re-listen because there are so many nuggets in that I need to take notes. Thank you, Lord. Wow. Thank you. I need God. to take notes. Thank you, God. So thank you. I thank you. I want to say to you that you bless my soul and you confirmed um, a lady reflection I put on Facebook was about a week ago or so and you said we need to be in alignment with the will of God I put up um, if you will he will but you have to be in alignment Jesus. of his will thank you Jesus. so I just want to thank you for confirming and like your first lady said having a, hear, a ear to hear God and um, just stay in his will LOL, you, you know. know? <laughs> All the way from St. Louis, right? I told Pastor, I said, this time, I got to come. Be at the right place at the right, right time. time. <laughs> that word was amazing. Since we met the Lewises, they have been encouraging to us. And I said, I got to reach out. So just to hear all this confirmation in the book of Acts and how you eloquently walked us through those scriptures was amazing. So I just want to say thank you for the hospitality. LOL. You know. I feel like I'm at home. Hey, I, I say something in St. Louis, cuz her. Hey, family. God bless y'all. But amazing. We love y'all. Amen. Amen. Would you just stand to your feet, though? Oh, you already standing. <laughs> Well, saved. all the members of Diaconate, would you just come up really quick? Deacon Salma, Deacon Fred, Deacon Daniel, Deacon Reg, Deacon Kim. Is there any way we can get Mother Gwen to come up and Derek and anybody who came with her? If Brad, if you can help them to come on up real quick. They come to this side, Brad. Come on to this side. Help them come on up. The people came to see, see her. Praise team, I want you to stand as well and I want you to get ready to point your hands. I've already decided in this last Sunday in September, we're doing another ordination. We'll be lifting up two ministers and we'll be elevating two new elders. Hallelujah. So the last Sunday in September, we'll be doing something. Make that or save the date on your calendar because I want you to see how we do stuff. I'm also having elders and ministers from other church come to stand with us because of their elevation. I won't really put it out in the atmosphere of who they are, but you can already guess who one of the new members, ah. ministers going to be. <laughs> Amen. So I'm not going to spoil the surprise anymore. <laughs> but would you guys just stand and point your hands to them, her right now. I'll lay my hands on her back. Pastor, would you come closer to her as well? Father, restore back to her. First lady, come on. Restore back to her what she used to get ready for your glory. So, God, we thank you for this powerful, awesome, mighty woman of God. God, we come against the spirit of backlash. God, we know that dumb devil going to try to mess up her day. But, God, we know she is already, you've used her to make our day a, a whole lot better. So the enemy will always try to sneak in. But God, greater is he that's in us than he that is in this world. So we plead the blood of Jesus right now over this woman of God. God, let her, have, let her never have to stress and worry about anything. Bring everything in alignment, Father God, with your will that she will preach the gospel, not only in Manassas, but around the world. 
open up doors of opportunity, God, that she never seen herself. God, give her invitations that she just can't say no to because somebody need to hear your word. Bless her son and her mother, God, and everything that she sets out to do. And God, we want to thank you for allowing her to be used by you today. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, give God another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Come on, it's offering time. I want you to get excited Hallelujah. about offering right now. Come on, do better than that. Somebody want to show back Hallelujah. into the kingdom. I want to make sure, listen, if you feel in your heart that you want to give to this church, those of you who are online, you can cash app us at Light of Life Church. Your dollar sign cash app, Light of Life Church. But also you can give on our website, which is lightoflifechurch.org slash forward slash, I guess, or whatever that is. Yep. Slash it. give. Do I have any millionaires out here? Come on. Any millionaires watching? <laughs> I want you to see what God can do for you. I want you to also text to give at 703-454-5131 or go old school and send us a check at P.O. Box 123, Haymarket, Virginia. 20168. Is God good? Uh, Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. You're already standing. Let me give a benediction. Would you just stretch your hands to the Lord? Father, we thank you. We honor you and we bless you. Thank you for the good seed that just went in the ground. But God, as we leave this place, but never from your presence, as we log off, God, let us not forget who you are. Place angels of mercy and protection and travel and mercy around us. God, we come against overeating and speed tickets. For it is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Come on, give him a praise. Those of you watching, watch this video. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.